Welcome to SNW, the November Virtual Artists Reception. I'm Jerry Moon, and this is... We're doing a little sound check. Can you hear that? Okay. Um, I am... Thank you. Stepping into the light. Uh, I am opening here in Manhattan, Kansas, and I have eight or ten paintings up. The first one is All Eternal Things. I mostly have just been working from watercolor sketches and then expanding those. Uh, when I first began these, they were inspired by my tempera paintings. And I wondered, and when I worked in tempera, it was always very fine, little tiny hatch marks. And I wondered how that would look enlarged. And this is what has come of it. I worked really big for a first few, and then I shrunk them down a bit. Um, anyway, it's mostly about color and interrelationships. Uh, I mostly just kind of winged it and laid down color and then more layers. <laughs> anyway, uh, shall we move on? Uh, we can zoom in, we can zoom in. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and there's like 15, 20, sometimes 25 layers of color going on. So you can sometimes see where color will peek through. And that's really important to me. It gives the painting sparkle. And uh, movement. It just lets it kind of scintillate. Oh, okay. Um, the way Alan and Amy set up this batch of paintings, I love the way it's hung. It's, um, it's nicely balanced. The colors are all working together. Um, yeah, it's, it looks beautiful. Uh, I'm going to give Amy the credit. <laughs> Um, this one I started uh, a little bit after my grandson was born, worked on it for uh, three months, and typically the way that I work on these paintings is I'll have eight or ten of them going at the same time, and uh, I'll lay down a color, I let it dry, pick up the next one, lay down a layer, let that dry, pick up the next one. So there's, there's a little bit of detachment between each painting, but it also lets me get a little distance on it and kind of decide uh, where to go next. Um, with this one, I, it started out really green and Really, the only green that's left now is here in the corners and underneath, you can see it. Uh, I ended up uh, gravitating more towards a tertiary color scheme and that, it really took me and I just started building up on it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 20. Uh, question was. Uh huh. How many layers do I put into a painting? It can really vary. Um, I have some paintings that only have 10 or 15 layers. I have other paintings that might have 30, 35 layers. Uh, it's a very meditative process for me. Um, 
I like doing very uh, just slightly different color layers so that they kind of harmonize with each other. Uh, sometimes I'll go for a brighter contrast, like on this one, a lighter and darker blue. But underneath it all, there will be some unifying color, pink or orange, something that tends to contrast with the upper layers. Uh, but uh, my biggest concern most of the time is the transitions and the motion. Uh, kind of what I'm after is just kind uh, uh, it, it should be active. It should draw you in it, and get you looking up close and then stepping back. Uh, more of a meditative thing than anything else. The color relationships are important, but what I'm really trying to capture is this uh, area of time that I spent on this. So it's a, it's a capturing, capturing time over the long haul, not just a moment, but a whole range. I am not articulating this very well, but uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, so when I first when I first begin them, they're just little tiny watercolor sketches. But as I work on them at the easel, they build up and up and up, and they, they become much more complex creatures. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, so when I. says you're doing great. <laughs> you're doing great. Lots of people are turning, your friends are all tuning in. All right. And Thanks, Beth. <laughs> um, I, with this series, I tended to use fairly bright colors, and I wanted to see how they would uh, mesh. And it presented some challenges, because uh, you start getting contrasting colors. It can get muddy really quickly. Um, it doesn't, though. It doesn't. Right. It, it's kind of, well, and that was a challenge. I was trying to let each color keep its integrity, but also merge into one another. And I think the way that the colors kind of break up before they merge uh, helps the colors keep their integrity. They're, they're bright and clean, and um, I really enjoyed. Okay. Uh huh. Says David is with her and <laughs> wants to know what the names of the paintings are. So. Oh, okay. So. Brie. Um, and most of the painting titles, the titles don't really have anything to do with the content of the painting. They're mostly uh, the day that I finish them, there's a song or a phrase that's stuck in my head, and I will steal a portion of that. This one is Gideon's room, which is, Gideon is my grandson. When I finished this, it hung in his room for a while. That's all. Fairly arbitrary. Uh, Tarantula was the name of a song that I was listening to when I finished this one. Um, aerodynamic, the same thing. If you like Daft Punk, that's, that's one of their songs. Uh, the Tenth of Always, uh, this was a phrase from a book I was reading at the time, and I can't tell you the name of the book, but that Tenth of Always kind of stuck with me. So the titles don't define the paintings, they're just a way for me to categorize them. So 
Ben Hilmes. Thank you. The process <laughs> is amazing. I have watched him paint for hours, and it is truly incredible to see how it comes together. Yeah, and it's really weird. Uh, my wife will sometimes talk about, she'll look at the painting when I first rough it in and not like it, and then as the process, as it progresses over a month or two, she's like, okay, that's starting to look okay. Okay, that's, that's actually good. Oh, I really like this one. And, it, and a lot of it is the early layers are very dynamic and often do not necessarily work together, but as the later layers go on, they become a lot more cohesive. And eventually, hopefully, it becomes a thing that works together completely. This was one of my earlier efforts, and it has fewer layers, so you can see sometimes in some of the places where the native canvas comes through. As, as I started working more with it, I became more compulsive about getting more and more layers on it so that less and less of the canvas showed through or the panel if it happened to be painted on wood. Um, and if I could, if I could, I would go back and add another 10 or 15 layers on there, but um, sometimes you just have to let the early stuff go and work on later stuff. Okay, so we have lots of comments. Excellent. Uh, Carlo Pascolini says, Jerry, it's going well. Really looks great. The production is showing your work really well. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you, you, Carlo. Carlo. <laughs> um, Gideon says, hi, pop, pop. <laughs> Gide How old is Gideon? Gideon is two. Okay. And a very... He just turned three. Oh, pop, he pop. did. He did just turn three. Yeah, you, you're getting lots of love. Okay. Um, Any oh, questions? Here's, here's a good one. Some appear geometric impressions, but some appear to be conveying an emotion. Can you describe what your motivation is on some of these paintings? Sure. So your motivation is? My motivation is an emotional context that will bring you in and ask you to study the painting. Not study, but think about it. It's, it's more of uh, like watching a sunset go down. It's uh, something like that. Um, I, a lot of the times, begin my paintings with just a really w rough watercolor, and then I'll emphasize where those colors kind of went. So they're organic in a way. Um, I have later paintings where they're much more rigidly geometric, um, the, like Arrival over here. Uh, again, it began as watercolor, and then I reinterpreted it in oil. But there's very definite shapes. Uh, when I first began this process, it was much more uh, just kind of a radiant sort of feel. I wanted the colors to kind of run into one another. Um, but as I progress, or like on this one, there's very definite shapes coming through. The pinks, the aquas, the blues. Um, So when I first began working on this painting, it was an all-over sort of thing. But uh, weeks into it, certain shapes would emerge, and I would just emphasize those. It, it was more like the painting was helping me to pull it out of the void. Uh, so it's not... I don't always have a perfect view of what the painting's going to look like when I first begin it. It kind of develops. Uh, I 
put color down, I walk away from it, I come back to it, I see something else coming out of that and I'll emphasize that for the day and it kind of documents that whole process over weeks and weeks. Okay, so we have lots of comments, which is great. Sue Godwin, one of our, you mm -hmm. know Sue? I know Sue. Sue Godwin, yes, yeah, she mm -hmm. says she's really enjoying the textural dimension. How long have you been working in this style? Uh, I started this about three and a half years ago. Uh, previous to this, I was doing a lot of landscapes and then I started doing much more spare landscapes. They became less trees, uh, less anything except for ground and sky. And then from that point, it jumped to just these organic shapes. Uh, so there's a progression there from my old landscape painting to this, uh, but about three, three and a half years ago, I started painting this way. And I started it doing small stuff in tempera and watercolor, and then I got to wondering about what it would look like hugely enlarged. And this is, <laughs> this is what it looks like when I start blowing it up. Terrell. Mm -hmm. Terrell, how many paintbrushes do you use in a typical uh, Well, I always use the same size. It's a, it's a size uh, same size paintbrush. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a number two Badger Bristle paintbrush, um, flat, and I will wear down three, four, uh, with this one, it was seven. I went through seven brushes. And I just wear the bristles start out about this long and they end up like this. And it's just from the sheer repetition. And the repetition looks crazy. I get it that you see all of those hash marks. <laughs> but when I'm working in the studio and I've got my music going and I'm just moving along row by row, it's, it's very soothing. It's a very soothing appro uh, approach to painting for me, and hopefully it produces a soothing image for you. Tell so, us about your studio. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell, tell, all right, about my studio. So for years, uh, when I was painting, I painted in garages and dark basements, and I'd have one light and work that way and uh, six years ago we were fortunate enough to buy a house in Lottawana, Lake Lottawana in Missouri and the entire basement had this just huge concrete space with windows that looked out on the lake and it was echoey and a little cold, so uh, we carpeted it, which I know sounds crazy for an oil painter, uh, but I have, I have thick, like, wrestling mat carpeting, and um, I put a couple of uh, drop cloth rugs underneath my easel, and it's this very soothing, quiet space. Uh, I'm looking east over the lake, so if I'm up early in the morning, I got the sun coming in through the windows. And it's, uh, it's a very meditative space. It really facilitated this whole process. So Bree uh, says again, she appreciates how much time the paintings take, and that's not something one really thinks about until we hear the artist talk uh -huh. about it. Bree appreciates the time involved with my paintings. Yeah, and it, that's something that, it, it's a dedication on my part. Um, I can do really quick paintings, and I have done those, but the ones where I tend to spend time and obsess over uh, just have a resonance for me that the quick ones don't. By Belize? A dive. Did you go on a dive with Ben in Belize? Because Ben is reminded of a dive. Oh. No, uh, 
no, none of these are inspired by diving, but um, uh, there was a time that I went to Mexico snorkeling, and yeah, I can see where that association would come. Uh, I mean, the way the water, the light comes through the water, absolutely, I get that association. It's, again, it's a meditative thing, it's very soothing, uh, reflective, and that's what these are about. Any other questions? Uh, well, we have comments. Um, the whole room smells like turpentine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Jeff, what's your favorite thing to <laughs> yes, Mom, I got my artistic talent from you, for sure. Linda, all these people are watching, and Cinnamon says hello. Hi, Cinnamon. I'm glad you guys are watching. Welcome back to Missouri, by the way. I, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, people ask about my frames. I, yeah, I make all my own frames. Uh, they're called a floating frame because the painting doesn't look like it's being touched by it. Um, I started making them with maple, and some of these older ones, you can tell that they are. Um, but what I found out was that cedar actually makes for a darker frame. And I struggled for a long time trying to get a frame that was black that could withstand movement from gallery to home, home to gallery. Um, and my wife saw this show. What was that? Home? Yeah, some HGTV show where they had done a boat where they burned the wood on the side of the boat. It was called Shosugi Ban, which is a Japanese process. And I guess the Japanese have done it for seven or 800 years. They do it with their fishing sheds to resist the weather. But essentially, it's uh, build the frame, then char it with flame, and then you brush it off with wire and then you oil it, and it turns out beautifully. It has this nice handmade feel to it that I really like, but it's very contemporary to me. Anyway, uh, so I spend a quarter of my time at home making frames in the garage, and it gives me a little more hands-on feel, and I, I can get dirty and feel like a manly man, and... Uh, and then the rest of the time I can work on this. Yes, well, Tasha says her frames are his art, too. And she also asked, do you have a size you prefer? Yes, I really prefer a two-foot by two-foot painting. It's big enough to have presence in a gallery or presence in a home, uh, but small enough that I can move it around in my car or make a frame for it in my garage. When I start trying to make frames for four foot paintings or six foot paintings, it gets very difficult. So two foot by two foot. So, so I have a question. Do you prefer we have panel and we have canvas? Uh, the question is panel or canvas, and I like panel better. Uh, canvas has some give when I'm working with this hatch mark which can make it bounce, uh, and I don't always get the straightest line, whereas panel, a wooden panel just lets me, it doesn't give at all, and it shows exactly what I'm painting. There's no distortion whatsoever. But the, pro the drawback with panels is they are heavier. They are. I know that. From personal experience. Yes, especially when you start getting big. Anybody? 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 Anybody?